Alrighty. Sorry about that, guys. There was an issue with the uh, stream, and I just it would be better to start it, stop it, and get it restarted. So um, some people couldn't see the stream, and I think it was because it was streaming under the wrong account. So whoopsie daisy. But now we're all fixed up and good to go. So I apologize for the inconvenience. Hopefully, we'll give everybody a few moments to reconnect here before we kind of get rolling again. But uh, blah 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 blah. So on the aftershock today, uh, we're going to talk about a few different things. Uh, I've got a few topics listed. Of course, uh, I'm going to ask you for your comments over here. So if you uh, if you want to uh, to comment or say something, you can ask it over in the comment section, and I'll read it and then uh, go through it periodically throughout the broadcast here. Um, Ronald asks, is there a tool that I can run that will tell me the actual OS version that I'm running? When I go to settings, updates, and update history, it says see more. Yeah. So, Ronald, right click on your start menu and left click on, I'm assuming you're running Windows 11. So, right click on the start menu, left click on system. This is going to take you to your system about control panel. Uh, and you can scroll down and, like, I'm running Windows 11 Professional 22H2, OS build 22623.1180. My build will be different than your build because I'm in the Insider program. Um, so yeah, that it'll tell you the exact the exact numbers of your OS build. So you and all all the specifications of your computer actually everything that you need to know about it will be in there as well. All righty. Thanks for the audio check, Winston. Appreciate it. Roger's back. Mitch is here. Richard, Pat. One more time. Sorry, Pat. I, I saw that you joined, and I, I'm not sure how you were able to. I couldn't join my own stream. Like, I was trying to join it, and it was like, uh, this stream doesn't exist. And I was like, I don't understand what's going on. But then Pat was like, hi, I'm here. And I'm like, and? <laughs> it's like, hey, I'm here for the party. Slam the door shuts. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't personal, Pat. Trust me. All right. Uh, Steve, Roger, and Karen are here. Can you please put up the link to use ChatGPT? Yeah, so uh, ChatGPT, you have to create an account to use it. Chat GPT. Um, you have to go through and create an account. It takes a few minutes to do. Um, but yeah, once, uh, well, let's see. This page open. Oh, it's a blog post. We want to go openai.com. There we go. So and then we want to get to the actual trying the chatbot page. Copy. And we'll paste it. All right, so here's the link for ChatGPT if you want to mess with it. Uh, so you do have to create an account. You do have to log in. And then once you're logged in, um, you'll be able to just, you just type chat with it. Um, and so each chat is a separate uh, conversation. So when you, when you start a chat, ChatGPT remembers what you talked about. So, for example, if you start off a conversation asking, is the COVID-19 vaccine safe? Every response after that is going to be framed in the context of the original question. So if I turn around and say, well, what about adverse reactions? It'll give me the boilerplate. Well, vaccine adverse reactions are common. But more importantly, regarding the COVID-19 vaccine, vaccine reactions, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and the, the information is all wrong because it's all from 2021. But and it, it says that, but we understand this is, an, this is a subject that is changing quickly, and uh, my information is dated till 2021, so it could be out of date. Make sure you talk to your doctor is basically what it said. So it was, a, it was an interesting toy to play with. They're going to be releasing an API soon, and when they release their API, um, that's the Application Programming Interface, uh, that will allow other companies to integrate chat GPT into their products. So for example, you could have a support line that integrates chat GPT and you could talk and you think you're talking to a human representative, but you're actually talking to chat GPT and you can give chat GPT authorization to do things and chat GPT will make the decisions on what to do based on the options that are available and the circumstances of the situation and the context of the conversation which is what you would expect a human to do. So, like I said, the potential for this thing, if they're actually able to pull off what they're trying to pull off, is epically huge. We're talking um, job replacing huge. Now, normally people would freak out about that, but right now we can't get enough people to work. 
and the people who do work do a crappy job of it. So I went to the buckle to get a pair of jeans, right? Because I can't, you can't find jeans anywhere now. Well, I can find jeans everywhere, but my wife likes my jeans to be shaped a certain way, apparently. I have a nice butt. So I, I don't look at it. I don't know. So anyway, you know, I got, she goes, you look like a square, you look like SpongeBob with your square jeans. And I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. So she wants something a little more fitted. I got it. Okay. I don't like skinny jeans or anything like that. I don't want anything like that. So we find a compromise. It's an athletic cut, straight leg boot cut, something. I don't know. But nobody had them in my size anywhere. We went to the malls. We went to the, the department stores. Nobody had them. I didn't want to buy my jeans online, right? So we went to uh, to the buckle because my son gets his jeans there. And my wife's like, well, you know, his jeans, they have jeans there. Let's go look. We're right here at the mall. So we go to the buckle. We're at the counter. We find jeans. We're at the counter. We're buying the jeans. The girl behind the counter is the absolute, I'm going to be, I want to be kind. But she's a moron. Like, Mm, painfully stupid. Like, wow. You, there's like, there's the person that you can look at in the store that says, you're going to be managing this place in six months. And then there's the other person you look at and you say, you're going to get fired and you're going to go work somewhere else where no one wants to work with you in six months. Um, so my wife's like, let's just make life easier on ourselves. Jacob, my son, is already in the system here. We're going to, we, they had one pair. I wanted to order another pair. They're going to ship them to the house, whatever. Um, Let's just give, let's just say you're Jacob, and then they'll have the address and everything already in the system because he's ordered stuff there before. Perfect. So, hey, I'm Jacob. And they, they type it in, and sure enough, nothing comes up. She may, or she typed the name wrong, whatever. So she has to enter it all again. So then she's asking how we want to pay. And she says, would you, you can save 10% today if you pay any way but the buckle card. You can save... 10% today if you pay with any method other than the buckle card. So, yes, I would like to save 10% by paying with my Shields card. And she looked at me like, what? I'm like, you said I could pay any other way but the buckle card and save 10%. Did I, like, say that wrong? <laughs> I knew what you meant. Don't, don't bother explaining. All right. We live on Laramie Street. Can you spell that for me? Laramie, like Wyoming. Um, it starts with a W? L-A-R-A-M-I-E. Okay. Papillion, Nebraska. She just... She's not typing. Why is she not typing? She looks at her coworker and says something, and her coworker's like, P A P I L L I O N. And I'm like, sweet baby Jesus. You didn't even know the first letter. Like, they misspelled my wife's email address because she had to get an email address. <laughs> I shouldn't say her email address on, on the radio, but her email address is her name at her name.com. You know? <laughs> It's not rocket science. You already have the names. Like, can you spell that for? It's on the screen. Oh God! Good afternoon. Oh goodness. So yeah, that was. Um, those are the kind of people that are going to be replaced by Chat GPT, and your life will be more enjoyable as a result. Um, we were helped by another person there who was slightly socially awkward, slightly Gen Z, but she was making a solid effort. And she was connecting with more than 50% of her attempts. So, you know what? That's, that's somebody who's willing to develop their skill sets and their abilities and become better at what they do over time. Because nobody is perfect at what you do. And especially the first time you do it, right? My son was horrible with this in school. My wife homeschooled him. And it's like when he would write, he would write with a pen. He didn't want to write with a pencil. And he'd make a mistake and you can't erase a pen. And he would get so angry because his paper wasn't perfect anymore. He had a serious perfection complex. Uh, we finally got him to start using a pencil, and then he went through a lot of erasers, you know. <clears throat> to this day, he doesn't like to write. Um, but anyway, the 
chat GPT is scary because people think, oh my gosh, this is how we, my wife said, this is how we get the robot overlords. And so then it was funny because with Alfonso, she, uh, she said, great, you've just given Alfonso a new toy and I'm sure his wife is going to say thanks for that. And so I, I said to Alfonso, my wife just said that this is how we get the robot overlords and that I just gave you a new toy and that your wife is probably saying, and then I had to translate things for that into Spanish. I don't speak Spanish, but ChatGPT does, so it translated it for me and I pasted it in and he got a chuckle out of it. And he goes, actually, she, <laughs> she just came into the room a few minutes ago and she wanted to watch a movie, but she saw that I was engrossed in my phone and so she said, we'll watch it later. <laughs> like boys and their toys. <clears throat> now imagine you take chat GPT and you pair it with a robot dog and you put a weapon on that dog. That's when stuff starts to get scary. So these are the different pieces and you know don't don't misunderstand my enthusiasm for chat GPT. I am looking at it like it's positive aspects, the things that it could be used for to make our lives better. When you're refilling a prescription at the pharmacy and you got to type the numbers, you call from the same phone number every time. They can't just look it up based on the phone number coming in and know when the phone rings what prescription you want to fill based upon what you filled roughly 30 days ago. All the data is there. There's just nothing to interpret the data and make a decision on the best way to deliver service. Now imagine if ChatGPT was running the pharmacy. You call in, it answers the phone. Thanks for calling the so-and-so pharmacy, Mr. Smith. Um, it looks like one of your prescriptions might need to be refilled. Are you looking for a refill on your whatever today? Yeah, yes I am. Perfect. Um, I can get that filled for you by Friday. Is there anything else that you needed today? Wow, holy crikey. It's like amazing service, but it was from a computer. And what we have been doing at Schrock with our technology, what we continue to do, we literally, we have a, an SO, we have a, a board on our JIRA, an agile board, that right now has about 12 outstanding issues with our online system, things that I want Alfonso to change to make things easier to service, to give our employees the tools to better service our clients. Some customers don't mind ordering from the McDonald's computer. Some customers think it's awful. Some customers won't go through the self-checkout. Some customers like to have the checker. You know, there, there's personal preference here. So we're not, I'm not trying to take away anybody's personal preference, but what I'm saying is when your choice is to be helped by somebody who is clearly, okay, minimum wage jobs exist for people like that girl because she needs to get a minimum wage job somewhere that's going to teach her how to work in a job. People who work minimum wage jobs are there to learn how to work in a job. They're not, you show up on time. You clock in. You get a paycheck every two weeks. That paycheck is not the multiple of your hourly wage times your hours because there are these things called taxes. These are all lessons that we've all had to learn along the way. There are deductions for things. There are costs associated with If you screw up, you'll get sent home early. If you lose your job, then you don't get money anymore and you have to find another job. And when they check your references, you know, these are all things that you learn over time by screwing up. And when you're a minimum wage employee, the universal understanding is you're in a job that if you screw up, it's not the end of the world. As a result, your job is not that important and you're not going to be paid 15 or 18 or $20 an hour to work in an unimportant job. But right now in the economy that we have, you have to pay people $15 plus an hour to work in non-important jobs or they won't do the work. They just won't show up. I don't know how they live, but they won't show up. So it's, uh, I don't know, I'm on a rant now. I should stop. All because I went to the buckle, right? But no, I mean, that's why I get excited about chat GPT is because I see the potential of what it can do. And of course, like any new piece of technology, that potential can be used for evil, for bad stuff, or for things that were, that would be, you know, perceived as evil. You know, nobody, nobody thinks General Motors is an evil company, but they build tanks. You know, General Motors, not Automotive Motors. 
General Motors. So the Allison transmission was not invented for a pickup truck. Let's put it that way. Uh, that's that was one of the big marketing things. Now you can get a pickup truck with an Allison transmission, just like an M1A1 Abrams tank. Oh wow! I get a tank transmission. This has got to be solid. I bet it's super reliable because everything in the military works really well. It never breaks down. Hey, you know anybody in the military? <laughs> Do you talk to anybody? Oh goodness. Okay. Scrolling up. Alrighty. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. I gotta get up here. Here we go. So there's the link for Chat GPT. Was okay. Was working, then lost it back now. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, Thomas, that was me. Sorry. I, I glitched it. Um, Randy says, hi. Aaron says, greetings. Right click. Gosh, I hate that it's popping everything up. Right click, start, then system. Well, right click on start, left click on system, and then you see what you need to see. Then it tells you your build number. If you scroll down a little bit, it'll be right there under Windows information. Morning, Loanne. Morning, Jean. Got up late here in Florida Panhandle. Got to get some coffee. Oh, Bill, it's rough down there in that Florida Panhandle, all warm and cozy. Okay, Heidi says good morning. Corey says good morning. Mark's here too. Thanks for being here, guys. James. Oh, come on now. Packing the house in Grand Island sounds like they're doing bad things. The packing house in Grand Island sounds like they're doing bad things. Like, are you actually hearing a sound coming out of the packing house? Or is this like a news-related item? Like, you, there's reports that there are bad things happening at the Grand Island packing plant. Kind of got me concerned, Ronald. Are you safe? All right. It's pronounced Pappy Leon. Um, unless you are Parker, who calls it Papillon, or you are Walgreens Pharmacy, who calls it Papillon, <laughs> in their recordings. If you're in Nebraska, it's Papillion. I live in Papillion. If I have a Windows disk and it sheaths the D drive and my disk drive is no longer the D drive, what do you do? Okay. If I have a Windows disk and it, I don't know what sheaths means. I'm trying to figure this out from the context. It sheaths for the D drive and my disk drive is no longer the D drive. What do you do? I'm not sure what you're trying to do, Brad. If you're trying to reinstall Windows or are you trying to access the Windows disk for some reason? Let me know. All right. I use T-Mobile whole house internet. My computer Google searches always give results as if I live in Minneapolis. How do I tell my PC that I'm in Des Moines, Iowa? You don't. Ha! Ah, good afternoon. No. Um, basically, what it's doing is it's geolocating you based on your internet connection, and the internet connection, for whatever reason, is reporting that it's out of uh, out of Minnesota. Um, on your computer, you might be able, like a, a lot of people, if you have a Schrock computer, for example, when you purchased it, all of your location information is disabled. Um, so you might go to your location settings for your, like if you go under privacy and you can turn on location sharing, um, then that might overcome some of those features, but there's nothing you can do about the internet connection itself. Um, but you might be able to give more personal information to allow custom searches like Google to figure out where you're at. Or you could just use Duck instead, which doesn't try to geo-target your search unless you ask it to geo-target your search by saying like stores in Omaha. You know, and then it'll it'll give you Omaha stores, but it, it doesn't try to geotarget you. Oh, the packing house is using underage employees. No. One of my friends does not get messages now, but I get his messages, and he says it's on my end. Help! All right, so I'm assuming you mean email messages as opposed to text messages. So you're sending email, and he doesn't get them. So the next question, Leslie, is. I need to know what email, what, what the, you know, the at whatever.com, is it Gmail? At gmail.com, at yahoo.com, at msn.com. So I need to know what yours is and what his is because if they're not coming through, it could be because they're getting sorted off into a spam, for example. I'm assuming you've checked that. 
The other possibility is that you have his email address spelled wrong in your contact book. That would be the most logical thing. We always check the logical things first. Is it plugged in? You know, is your computer turned on? Are you trying to send the messages by tapping on the computer in Morse code rather than typing? You know, little things like that. But if, if all those things check out, <clears throat> the next thing I would have you do is send me an email. And if the email comes through to me, then we know it's not on your end. Um, and if I can send you an email, basically if it's a Gmail thing, I would have it sent to my Gmail account to see if it comes through. Um, it's also possible that you're on an email blacklist. Email blacklists do exist and regular people get stuck on them when scammers steal your email address and send out a bunch of spam messages pretending to be you. You can get added to a spam blacklist. You can check those if you Google check spam blacklist you can type in your email address and it'll come back and tell you if you're on any blacklists. And then you can go individually to those blacklists and petition them to be removed from the blacklist. Usually they'll give you off the blacklist like two or three times and then after that you can never get off again. So, and there's nothing you can do about getting put on the blacklist because you have no power. Child labor trafficking? That sounds way worse than like illegal kids working. That sounds like Someone stealing kids and making them work at a meat packing plant. I hope that I hope that's not happening here. I, I mean, I know I, you hear that there's a lot of trafficking that happens along the I-80 corridor. Um, you know, my wife when when we go to the outlet mall, um, especially when we have the littles with us, uh, especially Lou, uh, four year old Lou. He's he's bite sized. You could you could pick him up and run away. Um, she keeps a hand on him at all times uh, because she has heard stories of people who have been kidnapped from that mall. Um, she knows that there is af active sex trafficking happening at that mall, um, both taking people and selling them services because she's worked with the charities of the, with the house the women as they're getting out of that. Um, so she knows it happens. And there's nothing, I'm not trying to, you know, disparage the mall. It's not that the mall, the mall doesn't, of course, condone any of this. Um, and these live, they have security, but there's a limit to what you can do, right? But the I-80 corridor is tempting because you, you can snatch somebody, you just jump on the interstate, and you're gone. You're in another state. Um, scary, scary stuff. I can't imagine having somebody steal a child. That just, it makes my heart hurt. Read an article that some electric vehicle radios do not have AM band. Yeah, most of them don't. Um, primarily because the cars themselves interfere with the AM radio band. So uh, the motors, the electric motors, put off RF interference that will that impacts AM radio. So there you go. Um, I do. I have Brad says I have a Windows disk and it wants to look for the disk in the D drive. My disk drive is no longer. Okay, so the D drive is something else then. <clears throat> what you can do is you can go to Disk Manager to get there. If you right-click on your Start menu, you should be able to left-click on Disk Management. So when you click on Disk Management, this is going to open the Disk Management window. In here is a list of every disk on your computer, whether it is a USB flash drive, whether it's a DVD drive, whether any disk, all your card readers are in here. And basically what you can do is you can right click on the, and it gets a little complicated, so you know if you need help, have us help. But where it tells you the name of the drive and the drive letter, if you right click on the drive letter, you can say change drive letter. And you can change the drive letter to anything you want. So right now, something is occupying the D drive's spot. So you can plug in your, plug in your, your put your disk in, and then whatever is the D drive, change the D drive to some other drive letter, the, the Z drive, whatever you want to change it to. Then you can change your DVD drive to the D drive, and then you'll be back to the D drive. So that's how, that's how you fix it. It's like a 30-second fix. Uh, it'd probably take us longer to get connected on the Schrock desk than to actually fix it, uh, which is why I was going to try to talk you through it. Hopefully that made sense. If it doesn't, just give us a call in the shop, and we can walk you through it again. All right. Now, chat GPT is at capacity right now. How does it feel knowing that Schrock users listening this morning have brought down chat GPT servers? No way. It's a at capacity, too many people are using it. No way. Let me let me pop on here real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, you can't ask it any questions about companies. I did ask it yesterday. Can I make money online? Because that's what a lot of people Google: making money online. How do I make money on the internet? And it said yes, it's possible to make money on the internet. 
There are many ways to earn income online, including selling products or services. Check, got that one. Affiliate marketing, you can promote other people's stuff and get a commission, okay? Online advertising, you can put ads on your website, okay? Online tutoring or coaching, okay, that's selling a service. It's different than selling a product, but got it. You can do surveys, online surveys and market research. Not a great plan, usually you get infected doing that. Number six, I thought this was the most hilarious one, online gambling. You know, work from home is not on this list. <laughs> Get get a get a remote job and work from home over the internet, not on the list. But re, but gambling is online gambling. So uh, yeah, let me see if I can create a new chat. New chat. Yeah, maybe it's not allowing you to sign up right now. But I can I can create new chats. What do you want me to ask it? I'll ask it whatever you want. <coughs> All right. Fastwire, I'm signing up for their beta program. One gig down, one gig up, down, no limit. We're getting two free months in the free router for 12. They are buying the cable also. Wow. Ronald, let me know how that goes. That sounds like a pretty sweet deal. I would not mind getting away from the Cox Monster if there was another uh, viable option that would give us the high ping rates that we need. Um, the JBS plants in Grand Island and in Minnesota had underage workers hired by their subcontractor cleaning company. It came out that those kids may be victims of trafficking. Oh. So it's not the packing plant hiring the kids. They're contracting out, and then they're bringing in kids, and then no one noticed that they were like, oh. They're slaves. No one noticed that they were slaves. Sorry, it makes me really angry. I'm going to just not say anything because it makes me very angry. Um, so if you want me to ask something to chat GPT, let me know, and I'll ask that. Uh, meanwhile, though, did you hear about this? Uh, the no-fly list got leaked. Um, <laughs> so apparently the, uh, the U.S. government, as you might know, maintains a no-fly list. And the no-fly list prevents people from getting on airplanes. Well, somehow online, a subcontractor somewhere had a copy of the list from 20. 2021, something like that, or 2019, stored on a non-secure server, and somebody found the server online and was able to, because it was not secured, there was no password, you just went in and got the data and took it. And so they got the no-fly list, and there are 1.5 million names on the list. Now, many of the names are pseudonyms, or also no, or AKAs, basically, also known as. So it's not 1.5 million individuals on the list, but 1.5 million names that could represent fewer than 1.5 individual, 1.5 million individuals, but even if you assume that every person's got 10 names, I mean, wow, that's a lot of people who are just on a no-fly list. That's, that's crazy. But the fact they got leaked, so now if you're on a no-fly list, everybody knows it. Sorry. It's on the internet. You'll start getting, excuse me, oh my, you'll start getting spam messages to get yourself removed from the no-fly list. We can get you removed from the new the no-fly list. Our records indicate you may be on the no-fly list. That would be pretty hilarious. All right, let's see here. Update on cryptocurrency. Okay, so this is interesting. I saw, love him or hate him, Tucker Carlson is entertaining. Okay, so I was dropping my son off at his guitar lesson, and it's a half an hour lesson, so it's, there's no point in leaving and coming back because, you know, where are you going to go for a half an hour? So you sit in the parking lot and wait. So I was listening to Tucker on the radio, and he was going off about um, the FAA grounding all those flights, the, the, the first ground stop since 9-11, basically. And he was kind of being a little hyperbolic about it and, and I was kind of I was doing the this is entertaining but come on Tucker I mean this is not yeah no so he points out that you know the FAA you know all this stuff like it, it, it was a failure of a system okay whatever his position was it was ransomware my experience with ransomware is you know, they were back up within hours. So there's no way that that system was, was taken down by ransomware and then brought back online within hours. Not a chance if it was ransomware. Then he says, but then a funny thing happened. 
Did you know that the same exact thing happened in Canada? Same system, or similar system, same, same process, went offline. Do you know that a few weeks before it happened to us, the same thing happened in the Philippines? Similar system, just went offline. Interesting. It's almost like somebody is attacking FAA systems. And I was like, okay, that's interesting, Tucker, but, you know, again, doesn't scream ransomware. So then he says, now, if this was ransomware, most ransomware is paid in Bitcoin. So it would stand to reason that if multiple governments were getting hit with ransomware attacks and they were paying the ransoms, that there would be an uptick in the demand for Bitcoin, which would cause the price to go up. So then he shows a chart of each incident and the price of Bitcoin. At every leg up, there's a dot on the chart. I'm like, okay, you got my attention now. That That's data, and that doesn't happen accidentally. So you're... you're Premises could be loose over here, but that lines up. What's going on? This makes no sense. Interesting. So that was the first thing. So now I, I think, okay, I'm a little steamed that I, I sold six and a half Bitcoin and I could have had $7,000 more per coin. Seven times six and a half is what the money that I don't have in my bank account because I sold when I sold. Will it go down again? I believe it will. Why will it go down again? There's a lot of shady stuff around Digital Coin Group happening. Digital Coin Group it has its hands in lots of pies, from mining to pension retirement funds for teachers to like all. I mean, literally, if that goes sideways, we got a problem. Now, there's also there's been a lot of what we'll call it reverse fud. FUD is fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Whenever crypto starts to rally, everyone's like, oh, Bitcoin, it's a fake. It's going to go to zero. Warren Buffett says, Charlie Munger says, you know, and then, you know, that, the, the fear, the uncertainty, the doubt, maybe I shouldn't buy, I don't know, depresses the price of Bitcoin. This is reverse FUD. So what we have going on right now, and you guys haven't heard about any of this in the traditional media, and I take some of these stories with a grain of salt because logistically, I'm trying to wrap my mind around how logistically how this would happen. But the there is a push right now, and it is happening, to dethrone what's called the petrodollar. And I'm going to get back to cryptocurrencies here in a second. Just stick with me on this one, because this is, this is going to get weird. What is the petrodollar? Uh, the petrodollar is the United States had an agreement with the Middle Eastern countries that all oil would be transacted in U.S. dollars. So if you are China and you want to buy oil from Saudi Arabia, you have to take your yuan, change them into dollars, and then buy the oil with dollars. And in exchange for that, you know, we fought wars in the Middle East, you know. So now it's, what have you done for me lately? And the Middle East isn't so sure that we are quite the partner we used to be. So as a result... There is a willingness now to transact oil in yuan and maybe rubles eventually. Rupee for sure from India, now the world's most populous country because China's population is actually declining. Um, maybe they'll buy it in Canadian dollars. You know, maybe, you know, they don't really care what the currency is anymore. Why is that important? When you have to change your currencies into dollars to buy oil and you know you have to buy oil continuously, that creates a continuous demand for dollars. Without that continuous demand for dollars, th that's another, it, it doesn't single-handedly dethrone the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency, but it's another, it's another weight around the belt of the diver, if you will, that's pulling down. Now, another thing that's happening, aside from that, completely separate, more related to the sanctions on Russia, Russia and China want to get together and create a... Uh, a currency, whether that be a stable coin or whatever, that is linked directly to gold and or oil. So Russia's already done this. They have taken the ruble and they have linked it to gold and they are therefore linking oil to gold that's purchased in rubles because you have to buy your oil in rubles now from Russia. So if you're buying your oil for rubles and rubles are tied to the price of gold, therefore you're buying your oil with gold, essentially. If that happens, if there's a return to some form of the gold standard, 
there is not enough gold in the world to justify the amount of money that's been printed. So some currencies are just not going to go to the gold standard. Some currencies might go to a gold standard. Those that do go to a gold standard will be inherently more valuable than those who do not go to a gold standard over time. So nobody really believed that Richard Nixon would ever get rid of the gold standard. But then it happened, and the whole world changed. Another little bit of history that I learned this week that I did not know about. Do you know that the U.S. government, it is not true that the U.S. government has never defaulted on its debt. Um, we did uh, during the Depression. Uh, we devalued the currency, which is in effect a default on your debt. So, yeah, we've done it before. So when, when the debt limit ceiling fights start happening and everyone's like, oh, we can't, uh, d we can never default on our debt. That would be uh, catastrophic. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good at all. But it's happened before and we've survived. So the world's different now. The economy is different now, very much so. However, when they tell you it's never happened before, that's not true. It did. And I didn't know that. Learned something new this week. So with all this stuff going on, there's also a push of the creation of um, oil purchased with cryptocurrency. Now, on the surface, you'd say that's good for Bitcoin because obviously they use Bitcoin, right? No. They want to create a stable coin that is backed by the commodity itself. So this stable coin represents this much oil. And you can buy the oil with stablecoin. And of course, the issuers of the stablecoin can make as much stablecoin as they want. So it's not really stable because you don't really know exactly how much oil they have. And you don't really know. So, I mean, it's another fiat currency. It's not, it's, it's a cryptocurrency, but it's a fiat cryptocurrency, kind of like Dogecoin that can be printed ad nauseum without any, you know, any thought to how it dilutes other people who have the coin. So when you've got a situation with Bitcoin, where for whatever reason, maybe it's the FAA thing, maybe not, whatever, it rallies from 16 to 17 to 18 to 19, and then to 20. And then it starts going parabolic to 23. Now you're getting the people who are um, the fear of the FOMO people, the fear of missing out. If I would have only bought in a Bitcoin at 16 at its low when Thor sold, if I would have only bought Thor's Bitcoin for 16, I would have had thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 more money right now than when I started a month ago. I would have made $40,000 in a month. That's the fear of missing out. So people are buying my wife. Thor, should we buy back in? And I'm like, no. The only way we are 100% guaranteed to lose money is if I buy back in at a price higher than what I sold. That's the only... There is, a, there is still a strong possibility that Bitcoin will drop below 16000 again. And I'll be able to buy back in at a profit. No, I am not going to buy back in if I, worst case scenario, I'm still mining, I'll rebuild it. And I'll be happy with the cash that I got. Um, but it still chaps me. I pretend like it doesn't, but it does. It chaps me hard. If I would have waited another couple weeks. Yeah. So what do I think is going to happen? Logic tells me that the price of Bitcoin is eventually going to go back down and it's going to fall hard. Just like it went up fast, it's going to come down fast. Emotion is telling me to buy Bitcoin now. So listen to your brain, not your emotion. And of course, emotions are tricky. The Bitcoin price will keep going up as long as I believe logically it should go down. <laughs> and I'll just get more emotional. And eventually, you know, you crack and you buy the Bitcoin and then it goes down. Um, so I'll let you know the day before I'm going to crack. Um, and then that way, um, like yesterday, I was like, maybe I should have like a reverse stop loss. Like if the price of Bitcoin goes over a certain amount, then I'm going to buy back in in stages, uh, you know. And I'm like, maybe I should set that at 23000 And the moment, literally, that night, Bitcoin hit 23000 Well, I didn't buy. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to give $7,000 of money away for free because I'm being impatient. No. Nope, 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 nope. So, uh, let's see. Steve was able to get into chat GPT. So you could interact with the chat bot to teach yourself a new language. You know, I suppose you could, Yvonne. I suppose you could use this to teach you a language. <clears throat> Let's ask. Okay. 
Can you teach me to speak Spanish? An error occurred. If this persists, regenerate, regenerate. All right. So I don't know what's going on. If maybe my session ended, I got to log back in. Maybe. Let me log back in again. Refresh. Can you teach me to speak Spanish? I can certainly help you learn Spanish. Here are a few tips to get started. One, start by learning the basics of Spanish grammar such as verb conjunction or conjugation and sentence structure. Two, practice speaking Spanish with native speakers or use language learning apps. Three, immerse yourself. Four, try the new vocabulary and grammar structures you learn in your own speaking and writing. Five, be patient and persistent. I can also help you by providing you with vocabulary, grammar exercises, or tips, and also can help you with any questions you might have. So here's the pro I give you a process of learning a language that I probably got from the internet somewhere. And then it said, and I can help you. So yeah, you literally, it's, you could probably use it to learn a language if you wanted to. Okay, let's see here. Some people believe that mercury in retrograde caused the FAA to ground flights because it happened the exact same time. Well, it could have, I suppose. But then why did the price of Bitcoin go up? If you buy back, you record your tax loss at a higher amount. I don't know that it's a tax loss if I'm buying. I think I recorded the tax loss when I sold because I bought that Bitcoin in 2020 or 2017 at the highs of around 20000 and so when I sold it at 16, I booked a $4,000 per coin loss. I don't know if I buy back in. I don't think I can count the loss again. I think I have to sell it again to, to get the loss. I sell online, don't know what's going on, but I've had three packages lost last week in Atlanta USPS. Strange. Very strange. You know, it's like uh, I have a Shields card that I use um, to, to, to generate Shields points, basically. So when we have to buy stuff for Shrock, I charge it to the card, and then I pay off the card the next day. And I just do it over and over and over and over and over and over. And I'm like, you know, I'm like a black member like by the end of January, typically. Um, so I get gift cards, right? I open up my mailbox yesterday, and there is, I am not joking you, USPS delivered, like a letter, a $1,000 Shields gift card to my mailbox. And I'm just like... It wasn't signature required or anybody can take this gift card and go use it at Shields. It's not tied to me. It's not like I can recover it if it's lost. I, I can't look at an account and see that the card was issued and what the number is and where it is or if I've used it. It's as good as cash. And of course, all the envelopes that they come in look the same. So if you are an astute mail carrier that realizes that Shields sends out their cards at the same time, I'm, just, I'm not saying mail carriers steal mail. I'm just saying mail, mail carriers are people, and people steal mail. Um, so the, the two could be, can, could be related. Um, it just made me a little... Now, that's not... A, I don't normally get a $1,000 a month gift card. We buy a lot in the month of December uh, for, for Christmas inventory and stuff like that, and paying off bills at the end of the year and everything. And we run all that we can through that card, and we just mint out... Ding! There we go, $1,000 gift card. But they just mailed it to me. They literally mailed it to me. What is this? Looks like Amazon is having big problems. Look at all the changes they've made in layoffs recently, or made recent layoffs. Change to Amazon Music and the Smile Program. Uh, not only that, they're, um, uh, they're shipping. Their prime shipping is no longer guaranteed today. Have you noticed that? They took off the two-day guarantee for prime. So why are you buying Prime now? Like you're getting, my wife orders stuff now because I'm a, I have a business account, they ship my stuff a little faster, I think. Um, because when my wife orders stuff, she's not getting anything from Amazon in under five days anymore. Nothing. Now they just opened up a warehouse, not joking, like two miles from my house. So we're hoping that at least some things are gonna come more frequently, right? Because I'm sure that Amazon has an algorithm that's learning what people in the area are buying. And when you buy stuff frequently, Maybe those things get put in the warehouse to be pre-positioned for faster delivery. That makes sense to me. But um, it's not like they're using chat GPT, okay? So I don't know. Yeah, Amazon, there's definitely cost-trimming efforts happening. 
uh, which is one of the reasons, well, one of the stories we have Netflix is cracking down on password sharing. Have you heard about this? They've been, they tested out their, their software and their algorithms in South America first where no one would notice. Um, and now they're going to roll it out to North America, including the United States. Basically, when you have a Netflix account, you're paying for the use of Netflix in one household. So that would be mom, dad, and kids. Not grandma and her house. Not your uncle at his house. Not, not your kids who have grown up and moved out and live out of state. One household. The people who live in the house. A household has an internet connection, and an internet connection has an IP address. Therefore, people who frequently connect from the same IP address that is not the IP address of the main house, it could be assumed that they are in a different household. And of course, because there's data everywhere about everything, we know who these people are based on their IP addresses, which is why you should use a VPN. So therefore, you are sharing your Netflix account outside of the home. So when you go to sign on, we might try to tell you we have to send a two-factor notification to your email address. And maybe we do this every time you load a show from these questionable IP addresses. Uh, so that eventually you'll just get tired of the hassle and sign up for a Netflix account because we have a new cheap option. It's six bucks a month for the ad-supported Netflix. So for six dollars a month, you can text every time you want to open a show and get the code from your daughter or your mother or whoever owns the account, or you can just pay six bucks a month. People are going to pay the six bucks a month. It's going to happen. So yeah, that's how they're planning on enforcing it. So it's not just Amazon, but everybody is having these issues right now. Um, I bought my son a new iPad, and he refuses to use it because it doesn't have a home button. He does. He's four. He doesn't understand that you just have to you have to swipe to to get it to unlock. Um, but I remember when buying a new iPad for my kiddos was like a nine hundred dollars. I was literally not looking forward to it. Like his battery was bad, his screen was cracked, and it was it was time. And I'm like, well, I can replace the screen and the battery. It's going to cost me like 400 bucks for all the parts. And okay, when I'm done, not counting time, of course. But so what does a new iPad cost these days? I bought him a brand new one for 550 bucks off Apple. Off Actually, Apple. It wasn't even Amazon or anything. It was Apple. It wasn't even a refurb. Usually I buy the kids refurbs because, you know, they're cheaper. And their kids are going to break them. So refurbs. So I added Apple Care to it for $69 as well. So for basically $700, I got a brand new iPad for my son that is current tech. It's got all the USB-C chargers on it and everything, but he refuses to use it because it doesn't have the freaking home button. He'd rather use the one that has to have a battery strapped on it with a cable to keep it running because the battery is no good and a cracked screen, but that's just him. Anyway, um, but yeah, when did the price of iPads drop $400? And I, I mean, that was one with 256 storage. It was, you know, it was up the ladder a little bit. Um, when did they drop? When did they become so inexpensive? So it's not just Amazon. Lots of technology-related things are coming either into oversupply or the prices are coming down. But there are weird areas where the prices are not coming down and there is no availability. So we still have these bubbles in the supply chain, like from motherboards, for example, that are mostly made in China and Taiwan. They're not getting here as fast. If you look at the dry container shipping, uh, shipping costs are at all-time lows now. We went from all-time highs to all-time lows, which is one of, the, one of the negative, the deflationary impacts that's hitting inflation. Um, you're seeing a lot of other things dropping that are pushing the rate of inflation down. And you hear news stories about inflation is going away. Inflation is getting better. But if you look at the core inflation numbers that strip out food and energy, because that's where a lot of gas prices down, that's one of the reasons why the inflation was lower. Well, if you strip away food and energy, you'll find that the CPI has been increasing steadily, um, point, like 0 0.01 every report. So it's getting a tiny bit worse every time. But now we have layoffs. Um, and like, okay, so I know a guy who got laid off from the Facebook, he was a Facebook project manager. He was one of the top guys at the Facebook data center. Nothing happened at the data center over in Sarpy County without it going through his desk first. They let him go. 
However, there's an article that Facebook is now going to hire breast inspectors. You heard me right. People who get paid to look at boobs on a screen. Breast inspectors. Why? It is allowable to show male nipples on your Facebook page. It is not allowable to show female nipples on your Facebook page. If you are a man who is transitioning to be a woman, you are not allowed to show your nipples on a Facebook page. If you are a woman who is transitioning into being a man, you can show your nipples on a Facebook page. Therefore, we this is one of the pressing, urgent matters that we need to handle in life. What is the gender identity of this nipple? Is this nipple being displayed as a female nipple or as a male nipple? And we can ban accordingly. They're firing project managers and hiring breast inspectors. The company deserves to fail. They, they deserve it. They're, they're, they're begging failure to come get them. And there's going to, there's weirdness in the world. And this is one example of it. But there's a lot of jobs that are getting cut. And I don't think, we're, we're not seeing this in the reports because the reports that are coming out of the Bureau of Labor Statistics don't add up. They don't match. There's two different reports. And there's a huge, there's like 1.5 million job divergence between the two reports of actual payroll data and then the estimated payroll numbers with seasonal adjustments. Um, eventually, those two numbers, the, the one chart goes, the government chart goes like this, reality goes like this. So the gap is getting worse. It's going to have to crash together eventually. And when it does crash together, we're going to see how bad it is. So we're either going to have a, sl a small recession that's not very deep, or we're going to have no recession, or we're going to have another great recession, or we're going to have a depression. Somewhere, somewhere between nothing happening and the end of all economic worlds as we know it. That's what's going to happen in the next year or two. Somewhere in that middle there. Buy stocks. I don't know. Hulu gave you a year at $2 a month to keep you from canceling? KJ, I'm calling Hulu because I saw my Hulu bill and I'm like, what in the world? I canceled my cable and went with Hulu because it was cheaper. And Hulu charged me like a hundred and something bucks. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. I don't think I watched that. I watched The Handmaid's Tale. And uh, that show is done now for another season. I can cancel and come back. I don't watch the NFL stuff. I don't watch the ESPN stuff. I don't watch any of the other stuff. Why am I paying a hundred dollars a month for Hulu? Yes, I have the DVR option. I don't DVR anything. Yes, I have the live TV option. Well, I wanted to have something to give me live channels, but for $100 a month, I'll buy the antenna. Thank you very much. This is stupid. So, yeah, I'll, I'm going to call them, get them to lower me down. Netflix, will they handle traveling and vacations to a different location? Uh, great question. Like I said, they'll probably use two-factor authentication to cover that. So they'll send a code to your email or to your phone and ask you to put the code in on the screen, which, if you are you, is a minor inconvenience. But if you are not you, is a major inconvenience because now I have to text you and ask you what the code is. The code's only good for five minutes, so maybe you don't take you know, six minutes to answer me. And then I have to text you again because I need another code. And at some point, you're going to say, why do I share my password with these people? This is really annoying. And you might decide to stop sharing your password. You can see what the pressure is here. So Netflix came out and said, we expect there to be a decline in subscribers over this initially which will be made up within one quarter by an increase in subscribers from people who are coming back for new content like Squid Games 2, stuff like that. When that stuff hits and they realize they can't access it because they don't have their shared accounts anymore, they're going to sign up for Netflix for 6 bucks a month, and then they're going to forget they're signed up like I did with Hulu until one day they notice their bill and they're getting charged $6,000 a month. And they're like, what? That's what they count on. And with that, the seventh seal is broken. <laughs> <laughs> okay, morning from Pierre, South Dakota. You're a tech guy. You should use IPTV. Why do I not know what IPTV is? IPTV. What is IPTV? Um, oh, IPTV. Watch TV online in the App Store. Okay. IPTV is an application, perfect solution 
Catch up on TV directly on your iPhone. Watching your internet service provider. Oh, okay. IPTV. Never really, never really looked at it. The other day, you know, when you, I would turn on my Samsung TV, it brings up some Samsung channel. Like they actually pay for for content, and sometimes it's like Top Chef or whatever. Well, I turned it on the other day, and there was some stupid cartoon on it. My kids started watching it, and literally, like for hours, they watched this this series. They were just they were just binging this cartoon series, and it was like the dumbest cartoon. It was like a squirrel and a moose or something, and not not like Rocky and Bullwinkle, but like. They're fighting and they're beating each other up and they're laughing. Kids are laughing and you know it's like they're finding different ways to to like one of them works in a restaurant, kind of like a SpongeBob knockoff. Like there's pieces of other cartoons. Like they took a Frankenstein of cartoons and smashed them together into one and put it on Samsung TV. My kids love the thing. I don't and I don't pay for Samsung TV, but I did pay for the TV. That's for sure, but not for the show. What six? 16 channels or 1,600 channels? I think you meant 1,600 channels. That's pretty crazy. I keep buying Prime because I have over 20,000 photos stored in Prime Photo Cloud. Yeah, Charlie, I use Prime as my photo backup as well. Um, but my, the, the Prime membership is used for shipping. It's used for uh, watching shows on Prime. It's used for my photo backup. Uh, I also have an Audible account, which is linked together, and I get a discount on Audible because I'm a Prime member. So they... they there's enough there to keep me in Prime right now, but there's a story that I didn't get to on the show that was kind of filler if I needed it. Uh, where is that one at? Uh, ChatGPT. Um, students, here's how to save money by switching to Prime Student. If you're a student wanting to save money during the school year, here are the steps to switch to Amazon. Switch your Amazon Prime membership to the student version. What exactly is Prime Student? Prime Student is a discount service that gives higher education students, like uh, college students, access to the same benefits as a regular Prime member for half the cost. The membership gets you unlimited photo storage, saves on rental textbooks, ad-free music for a buck a month, uh, uh, LinkedIn Premium, and the usual, I didn't know I got LinkedIn Premium for free, and the usual Prime member deals and free shipping services. Who is eligible? If you're a student currently enrolled at a college or university, then you're eligible. So if you're at Metro, you could save half on your Prime membership by signing up for Prime Student. What does it cost? Prime Student users start with a, with a free six-month trial that can, you can cancel at any time. So if you wanted to, you could start your trial when you went back to school, cancel before the membership fee in the summer and the winter break started. After the trial period, membership costs $69 a year or $7.50 a month. Uh, Prime Student can also stream music and TV shows for an additional $0.99 cents a month. Sign in to your existing Amazon account, go to Customer Service, search for Prime Student, fill out your credentials, like your school information, and go. The six-month trial comes with every Prime Student subscription, and you'll still be enrolled once it's over, but now you'll be paying. There you go, Prime Student. So, yep, didn't get to that one on the show, but... You could, you could save some money with Prime Student. Okay, we got the no-fly list in. We got Bitcoin in. Uh, we got Netflix in. So, guys, I've covered everything on my list. Is there anything else you would like to talk about before we wrap it up today? So uh, just go ahead and post a comment over there if there's anything else that... Uh, we, we almost hit an hour here, so it's about normal. Um, go ahead and post that, and then we'll get to any additional questions you might have. Uh, over at Schrock, I want to remind everybody that uh, we still have the deal going where um, we'll install your, your hardware... Uh, for free, basically. If you want a hard drive or a memory upgrade this January, we will upgrade you with no labor. Um, so you get the hour of labor for free uh, as long as your hard drive is good. You know, If your hard drive is bad, it takes a little more effort to clone it. But, uh, but you can check that out at any Schrock location. Uh, just make sure you ask for the deal when you're checking in. Like, hey, I want to get a memory upgrade or hey, I want to get a uh, solid state hard drive or I want a bigger hard drive put into my computer and then we can go ahead and get her done for you. Uh, so that's going on at Schrock through the end of the month. Um, we haven't locked down a lot of the other sales as far as what's coming in February. I've got a couple ideas, but um, February is a tough month to run sales in uh, because it's typically very cold, very snowy. There's a lot of weather. Um, Valentine's Day hits right in the middle, so money and disposable income is being spent on other things. Um, third, we've... People got their, their holiday computers installed, taken care of, and ready to go. Uh, we're getting into the spring. 
There's a weird lull there in the middle where not a lot happens in February. Uh, March and April, we usually hit with the ultimate upgrade sale. Um, then sometime in May or June, we usually run a maintenance checkup sale. Uh, July or August, we usually run a SOFO sale for back to school to get your schools, your kids' computers protected before they go back to school. Um, and then September, October, we usually run the second maintenance sale of the year, schedule permitting, uh, and so on and so forth. So, you know, we haven't done a recycling event in a while. A lot of people don't. It's weird. We re you can drop stuff off at our shop any time to recycle it. You don't have to have a recycling event. Every day is a recycling event. But if we have a recycling event, people show up. And I mean, a truckload of people will show up. But you can come any day you want. You don't have to just come and wait in line. You can drop it off anytime you want. But for some reason, people don't, and I don't get it. <laughs> so anyway, it is what it is. All right, no other questions here, guys. So thank you for joining us on the program today. I really appreciate you being here. Uh, great turnout for the Aftershock today. So, uh, we were, last time, the highest one I saw was 80. Now we're at 71. So that means I didn't take a lot of people off. So that's a win. But uh, we'll be back here again next Sunday. Next week, can we discuss Hunter Biden's $230 million net worth and Joe's classified documents? I mean, what more is there to say? Okay. Sniff test. Crack addict with no professional experience who happens to be the son of the vice president makes a bunch of money on the board of an oil company in the Ukraine. And why? You do the math. It's, it's just logic, right? He, he's not an, he doesn't know anything about oil. He even said that in a 60 Minutes interview. He said that other people on the board knew just as little as I did. Like, that was a defense. Like, I didn't know any less than anybody else on the board. What? Okay. So, classified documents. When Donald Trump has classified documents, they go looking through Melania's underwear drawer to find them. When Joe Biden has classified documents... Nobody was digging into Jill Biden's underwear drawer. Everything was handled with class, efficiently, and professionally. There was no raid with the CNN helicopter overhead. There were no boxes of documents getting perp walked out of the facility. You know, none of that. We don't even know what the documents are, but there were photographs of the Trump documents laid out on the floor and published. So, of the, the, the classified documents, really? Anyway... The double standard is so visible that to deny it is like Baghdad Bob. I mean, it's it's there. You can see it, okay? You may not like Trump. You may not like Biden. doesn't matter. You can, we, Reasonable people can look at that and say, these are two situations that are very similar. Some would say Joe Biden's is even worse because some of these classified documents he took when he was a senator. You're not supposed to take the documents, Joe. Some of them he took when he was vice president. You weren't authorized to take the documents, Joe. Now, the ones that Trump took, he took when he was president, and he maintains that he was able to, decla to, to single-handedly declassify those documents, which is he says he did. So, therefore, they are not classified documents. They're documents with classified markings. See, see the difference? Um, they were classified, but now they're not, supposedly. So, we could debate that all day long, whatever. But, okay, so there you go. Um... What else is there? Um, how does one never have a paying job in his entire life? Working government for his entire career and own multiple East Coast properties have a beautiful Corvette in a garage with a son who has a substance abuse problem that I'm sure you've helped several times. How does that happen? That's like when the when your postal worker, your mail delivery guy, drives past you in a Porsche towing a bass boat. Like, how does that happen? It doesn't happen. There's something else happening there. There's something else happening here. What is that? You know what? I don't have the power to enforce it. I don't have the power to investigate it. I can speculate all day long, but my specu speculation is like belly buttons. Everybody's got one. So what good does it do? But I'm just saying, if you, if you look at this stuff, prima facie, just look at it on the surface and say, what is the, 
what is Occam's razor? What is the most likely explanation for these things? You will come up with an explanation that would probably not be something that Joe Biden would want to have his press secretary asked, not that you would answer the question anyway. There we go, 64, 60 users. <laughs> there we tick some people off. We had to get it in before the end of the show, KJ. Had to do it. All right, guys. Got to go. Thank you for joining us on the program today. We appreciate you being here. We'll see you again next weekend for another edition of Compute This.